today we're playing a map I mentioned on my top 10 COD World of War custom zombies maps and this is Reichsgen's Lie. Just look at this, look at this beautiful map here. It's just such a good, it's just a good looking map. Like there's so much, so much little detail that really just makes, I mean look at all this outside. Like you can get a better picture of it later but this is good for now but I mean come on this is just a, a beautiful area to be in. Oh, we do not want to get that nuke. I can't see my round. I have to look around my mic in order to see the round number. I'm just going to try and separate out these zombies. Ooh, ooh, this double points is going to come in really handy right here. So the round is changing. Can I open this door? Thank you. Wake up by the Thompson and much, much more. So one thing that I didn't tell you in my map ranking that I actually didn't know about was there is so basically in that video I said that this map has only four perks basic guns that's it that's all uh, it's a Varuk style map without traps what I didn't know is there's actually a secret easter egg to unlock some pretty cool stuff and the first part to complete that easter egg is right here I was able to find the first two teddy bear locations and it took me a legitimate hour to find this third one. I had to look up five different tutorials, four of which none of them even knew about the teddy bear easter egg. I had to look up five different tutorials, finally found one where the guy uh, shot the teddy bear here and I was like, oh, finally. Look at this map. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Look at all the little buildings and stuff like that. The skybox is also incredible. It's the Varuk skybox. Um, I mean, look at just all these little areas, all these little models and details and stuff like that. Uh, here's Speed Cola, we'll go ahead and steal a quick 25 points from you. Like, I could never even, I could never even do this. Like, it's incredible to think. So here it is, here's the power. Got a box here, you got a jug here. We have a viable endgame here. I don't care who you are. Oh, there it is, see? Ah, there it is, leaning right up against that car. The shots you shoot into a guy and then get a knife is very specific. It kind of goes by fours. So like on round two, that's when you start shooting your Colt. You shoot eight, eight shots into a zombie and then you knife, right? That's how it works. On round three, it's eight, it's 12 shots. So eight shots and then half a clip and then knife. On round uh, four, shoot uh, a total of 16 shots of so two full clips into any zombie knife them and it's game over for said zombie yo uh, speaking of jug i've been playing uh, black ops 4 lately a little bit on my xbox and uh it's not something i can uh, video yet or anything i just don't have that set up sorry uh you're just gonna have to settle for uh Cod world at war but i mean it's a great game anyway i was playing that game and you know people always hate on the fact that you know that there's no jug that you kind of just start with it and the more i play that map the more i don't share that or when i play that game the more i am farther away from that sentiment i think the fact that you start out with jug is not as bad as people think yeah it takes out a bit of progression but honestly i like to get into a map and i just like to play it you know i'm one of those people i, I don't want to do long years of setting up even though black ops 4 has a lot of that but you know, maps where you can just hop into the action immediately. I love that. Like, that's why Ascension, one of my favorite zombies maps, because you hop into the action immediately. You open one door, and you're already at the training spot you'll be for the rest of the game. Like, it's awesome. I love stuff like that. And I feel like with, with Jug being taken out and just being given to you, you kind of get that feeling with every every single Black Ops 4 map. You get that, that sense of just, just jump into the action, just don't care about anything just already just get to it you know and it's i really i really i really enjoy it it's definitely not my favorite game jug i do feel is essential especially considering the better half of the community um but as is i don't like personally for me i really don't think black ops 4 taking out jug i don't think that was the worst possible thing they could have done now there were a couple things like the hud that was a pretty bad change. A um, couple other things. Uh, the removal of Speed Cola into you gotta buy all four of your perks to have it. That's a bit inconvenient. 
having to pack a bunch of your gun five times in order to fully upgrade it, that's a little annoying. Um, but I think, you know, everyone kind of grills Black Ops 4 over this taking out Jug thing. And I really don't think that's the biggest mistake that they make. I think it's... It's the best worst thing that they did, in my opinion. Granted, it is a selling point, you know, just seeing that jug. It, uh, literally, if they make a trailer and all it is, is just a faint light comes on and it's the jug icon, like that would be an incredible trailer. That would sell the game so well to the zombies community. But, you know, while it is a great selling point, I'm starting to see the more I play Black Ops 4, the more I realize why they took it out. Oh, also I just want to point out before I do this, this door, when I was first, first playing this map, first time playing it, this was the door that I was like, this, I feel like this looks like a legitimate door, like a legit door that should be able to open. But like, as you can see, if you walk up, there's no trigger, like you can't, and I was like, okay, well, whatever. Cause you know, even Treyarch in their zombies maps, do the uh, false door trick. It's a classic trick. Um, as you can see, behind this door, as long as the zombie doesn't wreck me, we have Pack-a-Punch, which I didn't know was on this map. And we also have a Scavenger wall buy. So the BO1 Scavenger, coolest wonder weapon of all time. Maybe not the best, but the coolest, definitely. Scavenger, it's just, it's just an amazing weapon. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have any pack punch variant, or it doesn't have any. Um, that's exactly what we needed from the box. Oh my goodness, what is that luck? I hit the box once, just kind of like a eh. I mean, if I get a PPSH, that would be perfect. But you know, the chances of that happening, and we actually got the PPSH. That, that's something else. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys have been seeing any of this news about uh, Spudley, if you know who that is, he's a he's a. He's a guy in the Call of Duty Zombies YouTube community. And um, he's someone that I never watched, you know, on a regular basis. It's kind of one of those things where if I was just beyond bored on my PC and I had nothing better to do, I would just kind of like, you know, he would be streaming, I would watch it, and I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. But apparently, I didn't know this, but for years, he has been under con controversy for subbotting. And you know that's that's not good. Subbotting is definitely is definitely wrong, somewhat illegal and immoral. Like that's not a good thing to be doing. And I didn't even know about this controversy. And recently, uh, Turbo Jack the Bus and holy cow, uh, Turbo Jack the Bus and Tim Hansen had a really good podcast about it. It was very enlightening. Um, it was very it was very interesting it was stuff i had never actually heard like i didn't know any of this was happening it was going on uh so yeah that was very it was very interesting to see that i i didn't know he was under all this controversy and i'm not going to say much about it but subbotting if he's if it's found out that he's doing that that's not good that's not good at all subbotting is not is not uh fair especially to people like me it's just small small creators who are you know taking every chance they get to uh, to try and get decent growth and when you just buy sub bots like that get that early start then it's just it's kind of unfortunate and it's kind of like um you know the way the way they put it why it's just really bad um is let's say you're looking for a YouTube video. Let's say a tutorial or something. Just something, you're looking for a video of any kind, right? So you search it up, you see who all has made the video, okay? Well, you've got the two guys. They've started at the exact same day, exact same time, and have been doing the exact same amount of work, right? Their videos are probably about equal quality at this point, right? equal quality videos well let's say one guy has sub botted and has 1k subscribers okay and then there's the other guy who hasn't and he has 44 right which video are you gonna click on 
Are you going to click on the guy who only has 44 subs? Or are you going to click on the guy who has 1K? Because the answer to you is you're probably going to click on the guy with 1K subs because he already, as far as you know, he already has some cred. He already has... Um, he already has some stuff under his belt. He's probably more credible when it comes to a tutorial scenario um, than the guy with 44 subs. Even though they're as credible as each other, they have equally good videos, you're probably most likely going to click on the one with more subs. And it's unfortunate because people will sub bot and try to get that early start. And it, it kind of just blooms from that point. Once you get 1K, then it turns into getting more than that right because when people see that you have 1k versus the 44k guy or four wow 44k versus the 44 sub guy they're gonna be clicking on the 1k videos right and then he's gonna get more views than the 44 44 sub guy so while the 44 sub guy is getting minor growth this guy is just going to be skyrocketing with how many views he's getting because of his early start and there's just it's gonna become more and more it's just gonna be a bigger gap as time goes on until the 44 44 guy is left in the dust and the 1k guy has cheated his way to being a big youtuber it's just it's unfortunate it's not right at all um it should never be the way anyone goes about getting to that point um, but yeah, I don't know if he did it. No one really does. People are sh people are pretty sure, but there's no concrete evidence yet if he has done anything. But I mean, hopefully we'll find it that out soon. Um, if he's proven to have it, I hope YouTube or somebody will take action to stop him or something. I don't know. But it's all in the clouds. But yeah, at this point, it is our job to stay in this room train away and um get 50k and win the game that's it that's all on some maps you have a wonder weapon such as um i don't know let me just kind of explain my logic first so this map my claim this map has the most genius end game Okay, let me explain this a better way. This map is probably the best map to have put in Endgame that I have ever seen. Because with some maps, high rounds are relatively easy. You've got stuff like Double Pack-A-Punch. You've got stuff like weapons with tons of... Or Wonder Weapons with tons of ammo. You've got am easy ammo replenishing methods, right? But this map is so close to being a good high round map, but it's just not close enough. So here's what you got. Here's your best setup. Four perks, training in the starting room, pack PPSH, scavenger with 18 total shots, okay? Now the scavenger, as far as I know, I don't know, but I'm guessing that it has close to infinite damage. It probably doesn't, but even then, let's just assume that the scavenger as is has infinite damage on World of War, okay? You only have 18 shots, and the amount of zombies each round is most likely going to increase. And those 18 shots are only gonna take out 18 hordes, and what if you just don't get that max ammo, right? Let's say you somehow make it to round 726, picking out a random number from the air. You get to round 726, okay? Using your scavenger, you take out 18 hordes, it's still going, and you run out of ammo, right? No more ammo. All you have left is a pack a bunch of PPSH. The only two methods to get ammo for your scavenger is to go down to the pack a bunch room and buy ammo off the wall, which with a whole horde at your back is going to be basically impossible because getting out of that room it's just going to be a nightmare. You'll probably shoot your scavenger in an attempt to leave, kill yourself, and yeah, that's it. That's all game over. The only other method is to get a max ammo drop. On round 726, the pack-a-punch PPSH is the equivalent of 
uh, an auto Springfield. It is garbage at that point. You're never going to kill a zombie. You'll probably put every bit of ammo into one guy, and you'll probably kill that guy. But that's all. The chances of actually getting a drop are so low. So basically, with all of that taken into account, high rounds on this map... Oh, and you don't have traps. That's another thing. High rounds on this map are basically impossible. But it's still fun to get to a high enough round, right? High round is still something fun to taste. And with the amount of ammo and the amount of power that the pack PPSH can keep for a while, you're going to get to a high enough round to satisfy, but not one that's considered like, you know, round 100 run or anything like that, right? And that's why the end game is perfect because it gives you a goal that isn't impossible. High rounds are basically impossible because of all the factors I have listed. But an end game really saves you. It gives the it gives the map a purpose. You know? I don't know. Kind of a long explanation. I hope you kinda of get what I mean. Um, but yeah, it gives it gives you an opportunity to, to taste a high enough round, because it takes a while to make 50k. But it also doesn't force you to go to the highest round possible because then eventually you're just gonna be running out of everything, nothing to do, and that'll be the end of story. So one video I've actually considered making that I think would be really cool is, oh, we probably didn't want that. One video I've been considering making that would probably be really cool is if I did a video. So I've done, I've done perk, like the perks themselves, and I've done a ranking on that, right? I've uh, done a ranking on the per jingles, right? And in my per jingle video, I did talk briefly about per design, specifically talking about uh, Vulturade, how I thought that was a very, very well designed perk machine, like the physical machine, right? What if I did a video where I ranked the perk machine designs from worst to best. We're actually very close. Oh, I know I said I was gonna use the scavenger exclusively, but we're almost there. Um, even if I actually make it to 50k and I have not used the scavenger enough, I'll probably still use it because I still want to show it off because it's cool. Oh boy. Oh, that's not good. Ow. But look at them. They're all gone. They're, they have disintegrated before our eyes. You know, I say, why not? Let's go for round 20 and hit it on round 20. Because, yeah. One thing I've been noticing lately is, even though I am by default an American, I watch a ton of Canadian YouTubers. And it's their accent is starting to grow on me. Like, if you, you've probably noticed times during this video where I've said things a very, very Canadian way, like go or boat or something like that. I say stuff like that by accident because I just I watch that accent more than I do American, more or less, most probably. Why am I using my PPSH? Can somebody let me know? I have no idea why I'm still using my PPSH. I, I told you, I promised you, I didn't actually promise, but I told you I was gonna use my scavenger, and look what I've gone and done. I didn't use my scavenger, what have I done? This is horrible. Shoot the shot, run, boom. And that's, that's it, they're all gone. It's over for them. So by the way, by the way, I just thought I'd let you know, guys. I have a map out on UGX and on Call of Duty Revo. I'll probably put a link to it in the description if you're interested in downloading it. It's called Vertica. It's, um, it's my pride and joy. Well, maybe not quite that, but why am I using my PPSH? I don't understand myself, but it's a pretty good map. Uh, I made sure to jam pack tons of features. Uh, you got stuff like hit markers from Doris Mod. Uh, you got tons of perks, so basically every perk that Treyarch has ever made is in that. You got uh, stuff like uh, zombies that look like five zombies, I was able to change the zombie models. You got Black Ops 3 custom weapons, I mean there's just tons of features on that map, you should be able to check it out. Maybe not the best design map, totally, definitely not as beautiful as just this masterpiece that you see before you. Um, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty sick. So we're just gonna head for the end game right now. Hopefully we don't get trapped because that would be oh that would be unfortunate as I was saying. Please, please. Oh please, please! I just I just want to make it there. 
And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Game over. I beat the game in 20 rounds. Um, almost 500 kills. That would have been cool if we had exactly 500 kills. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. Um, I'll probably have a link to this map in the description. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do until I'm done. But um, I hope you guys did enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. This is... Yeah.